This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this arch text emblem uh, using Inkscape. And in order to follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to download and install the specific font that I'm using here, which is called League Gothic. So I will have a link to that in the description of the video. Go ahead and download and install that font before opening Inkscape, and then we'll be good to go. So. Uh, let's go ahead and open up Inkscape. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make everything appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will also be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is set up our document. So we'll go to File, Document Properties. We're going to set the display units as pixels, PX. Turn off the show, uh, the show page border, turn that off, and then close out of that. And then we can open up the Align and Distribute menu with that button here. We're going to want Last Selected chosen from this dropdown. And then we'll go to the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. And then we'll go to View, make sure we have Custom selected, and then we'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. So the first thing we're going to do is create our text. So we'll grab the Text tool and click on the canvas, and I'm just going to write... Um, it, this works best using all caps, so I would highly suggest using all caps. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to write Inkscape. And I'll go to the Text Editor, which is up here, this little T icon. And I'm going to find that font called Lee Gothic. I'm just going to click on any font in this list and then just start typing in L-E-A. And there it is, Lee Gothic. Go ahead and click Apply. Close out of that. Go back to the Select tool and I'll hold Control and Shift and grab one of these arrows to scale this up like that. And then I'll go to Path, Object to Path. And then I'll ungroup it like that. And I'm just going to uh, take the opacity and bring it down about in half click off it to deselect everything. And I'm just going to zoom in on this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel to zoom in. And I'm just going to take these letters and move them a little closer to each other. So I'm just going to hold control to lock it onto the horizontal axis and just bring them a little closer like that, but without touching. You know, you don't want the bounding box around each letter to touch. Let me turn that off. Um, okay, like that. That's pretty good. And I'm just holding shift and clicking each letter as I move it. And then I'm holding control while I move the letters to lock it onto the uh, horizontal axis. I'll just hold shift, click on the next letter, then hold control and move it over to the left. Hold shift, click the next letter, bring it over. The next one to bring it over. We just want to bring these letters, we just want to make them be pretty close together because uh, we're going to need them to be close together in order to get this uh, empty space that we have in there. So um, once we've done that, we can click off it to deselect everything. I'll press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. And then I'm going to click and drag over all of that and group it all together with the Group Selected Objects button. And then I'm going to go to Edit, Copy. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle. So I'm going to grab the Squares and Rectangles tool. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. And uh, I'll make this red. And I'll bring the opacity of this down to about in half, like that. And I'll just uh, convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And then I'll go to Edit, Paste Size, Paste Size. And it's going to make it the same width and height that the word Inkscape is. I'll go back to the Select tool, click and drag over both of those. And we'll center them up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then click off it to deselect everything. So I'll take just the red rectangle now, and I'll lower that to the bottom with this button here that says Lower Selection to the Bottom. And I'm going to take this bottom arrow right here and just drag that down to make that longer like that. And now I'm going to create a, uh, an ellipse and put it right here. So I'll grab the Ellipse tool, just create an ellipse like that, and I'll make that blue. And I'll go back to the Select tool. I'll hold Shift and click on the red box and just center it on the vertical axis like that. And click off it to deselect everything. And then I'm just going to hold control and click and drag this straight up to about there. And I'm going to take this and make this a little higher. And what we're looking at here is where the blue meets the red, where that arch is, because that's going to represent the arch in the text. So that's something to pay attention to. We noticed at the sides here, it goes down a little further, but not much. I want it to go down a little further than that, so I'm just going to shrink this down. And that's pretty good. And the very top of the blue circle should go into the text a little bit. We don't want it up here like that. We want it to be a little bit in there, about maybe like a third of the way through the text like that. That's pretty good. Let me just double check, make sure I have that centered. Okay, that's pretty good. Once we've done that, we can click off it to deselect everything. 
I'll make this a little longer actually. And then click on the blue circle or the ellipse and then hold shift and click on the red shape. And then go to path difference. And now what we're gonna do is grab the rectangles tool and we're gonna create another rectangle like this going straight through it like that. Go back to the select tool. I'll hold shift, click on the word Inkscape. I'll center it on the horizontal axis and then align the left edges like that and then click off it to deselect everything. And I'm gonna zoom in over this now by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. Uh, you know what, let me make this green so we can see that better. And what we wanna do is we wanna take this box and make it the same width as the letter I. And we want to create other boxes for each individual letter. So I'm just going to duplicate this by hitting Control D. And then I'll hold Control and move this over to the edge of the letter N and just make that the same width. We'll do that again. We'll hit Control D, bring this over here, holding Control to lock it onto the horizontal axis. Make that the same width as the letter K. Correct that box right there. Control D to duplicate. This one's cutting it kind of close. We don't want any of these green boxes to be overlapping. So you notice that thin, empty space between these two green boxes? That should be, that's good. We don't want them overlapping like that. Otherwise, what we're going to do ain't going to work. So just make sure there's some space between each individual box. That's why we didn't want to put the letters too close together. So I'll hit Control D and duplicate that box again. Bring this over here. Adjust the width. Oops. Do it again. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make the boxes for the rest of these letters. And for this last one, I'll just hold shift and click the letter E and I'll stack it up against the right side. Align right sides like that. Click off it to deselect and take just the green box right here. Size it up to the letter E like that. And I'm just gonna zoom out. Uh, let me fix that. Let me zoom out by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel. And I want to hold shift and click on each green box so we have them all selected. And with them all selected, we'll go to path, union. And now I want to grab that red box. In order to grab that, we're going to have to hold alt on the keyboard while clicking. And once you have it selected, you'll know you have it selected. You'll see the bounding box around it with the arrows and you'll see the red stripe here in the lower left hand corner. And then once that's selected, we could hold shift and click on the green shapes and go to path intersection and now what I want to do is let's move this Inkscape text out of the way I'm gonna take this box right here and I'm gonna to go to path break apart to break them up into individual pieces and now we'll click off of it to deselect everything I'm gonna take just this one on the left right here and then hold shift and click this one on the right just with those two selected and I'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool and I'll click and drag over those bottom four nodes to highlight them all and then hold control and just click and drag them down about that far like that. We want those first and last letters to be sticking out a little bit like I did here in the thumbnail mockup. So uh, that's why we're doing that right there. Maybe a little further like that. That looks pretty good. And now what we could do is go back to the select tool, click on the text and then ungroup it. Click off it to deselect everything. Then I'm going to take the letter I and hold shift, click on the first red box and just center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And we're going to do that with the rest of the letters. Just center them up inside the red uh, shapes that they correspond with. Again, I'm just clicking the letter, hold shift, click the box, center it up on the vertical and horizontal. And this is not going to look very nice what we're doing here, but um, this is, uh, it, it's going somewhere. So uh, just uh, bear with me. See, it looks kind of sloppy, but it's going to get better. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take each individual letter and make it fit the shape of the red box beneath it. So to do that, let me just zoom in over it. I'll just hold control and roll up the mouse wheel. That's pretty good right there. What we first want to do is make sure we have our snap to cusp nodes turned on. This little green icon here, snap to cusp nodes. I'm going to turn that on. And then I'm going to click on the letter I. And I'll go to path, path effects. And we're going to get this new little window right here. And with that window, we're going to click this little plus icon and we're going to be given this list. And I'm just going to make this list a little bigger because it's bugging me that it's that small. Uh, and we'll go to perspective envelope, which is right there. Go ahead and click add. And from this drop down, we'll choose envelope deformation. And then we'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool. 
it's going to give us four nodes at each corner. And I'm going to take this corner right here and snap it onto that corner of the red box. And I'll take this corner and snap it onto that corner of the red box. Do the same thing right here, just snap it on there. And once we finished it, we can finalize it by going to path, object to path. And now we can click on the next letter and do the same thing. So let's click on the letter N, click the plus, choose perspective, click add, choose envelope uh, from, uh, deformation from the drop down, and just snap the corners together like that. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Now let me zoom in on that a little bit. There we go. If you mess up and make a mistake like I just did, you could undo it by going to edit, undo, or you just hit control Z. It's the keyboard shortcut for undo. Put that there. And again, we'll finalize it by going to path, object to path. Do the same thing with the letter K. And to move the page around, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Or you could just hold down the space bar and move the mouse, that works as well. So uh, click the letter K, click add, perspective envelope, envelope deformation, snap the corners together. And I'm pretty sure you get the idea now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fast forward through the rest of this. I'm just gonna finish up these letters here. Again, path, object to path. Let me just finish this up and I'll continue on. Okay, so now we're done. We have finished up putting the letters within each red bounding box. And what we could do now is close out of the path effects menu. We're done with that. And then we'll go to the uh, uh, select, go back to the select tool. And what we're gonna do now is, let's click off of that to deselect everything. I'm gonna zoom in over this bottom area over here to show you something. If you notice, the black represents the letter. Let me just make that bluish so you can see what I'm doing. Oops. The blue represents the letter if you notice, it's sticking out of that red, it's sticking out of that red object like that, which we don't want because we want the text to be taking the shape of that curve. Oops. We want the text to be taking the shape of that curve. And since we shaped these letters based on four points, it didn't quite do that. So what we're going to do is alter each letter individually. Let me make that black again. With this selected, with this first letter I selected, I'm going to hold Shift and Alt and click on it again. So we have both the black and the red boxes selected and go to Path, Intersection. And I'll do this over here with the letter N. It's going to better display what I'm talking about. I'll click on the letter N, the black one, then hold Shift, click on the red object and go to Path, Intersection. And it took that red bounding box and gave it the curve on the letter N, which is what we're looking for. So we're going to do the same thing with the letter K. Hold shift, click the red box, and go to path, intersection. And with the letter with the letter S, we don't want to do that because if you notice here, the bottom part is kind of sticking out. We don't want to take the, the uh, intersection of X. We're going to get this little cutoff. The, the bottom of the letter is going to be cut off. So what we're going to do for the S or any curved letter is just take this bottom arrow and just bring it up a little bit like that. We'll do the same thing with the letter C because it's in a similar style. Just bring that up a little bit. And uh, we could actually get rid of those boxes behind them now because they're done. Click on the uh, letter A, hold shift, the red box, go to path, intersection. Same thing with the letter P, path, intersection. And with the letter E, path, uh, intersection. And I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And what I want to do now is click and drag over all of it and unify it all together by going to path, union. And what I'll do next is I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D, and I'll make that blue, and I'll give it a blue outline by holding Shift and clicking on the color blue again. And then I'm going to uh, go up here to this button where it says Lower Selection to the bottom. Click on that. And I'm going to come over here to the Stroke Style tab, and I'm going to change this to PX, and I'm going to make this a little thicker. I'm going to go with maybe uh, 20, see how that looks. I'll make this a squared, uh, a miter join and I'll make this a squared cap as well. Um, okay, that's looking pretty good. Once we have it set at that thickness right there, we can go ahead and go to path, stroke to path, and then path, break apart. 
and it's going to break everything up into these tiny little pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and click on this blue segment right here to deselect the large blue shape. So we just have these little fragments selected. And with them all selected, we can just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. Let me zoom back out. Now I'm just going to create another border going around it. If you notice what I did here, there's a, two borders going around the wording. Clicked on that. I'll duplicate that, the, uh, the blue object, hit control D. And I'll make this one red. And I'll hold shift and press the color red again to give it another outline. And I'll send it to the bottom. And I'll make this one a little thinner. Maybe I'll go with uh, like 15. Now it looks pretty good. And we could finalize that by going to path, stroke to path, and path, break apart. And hold shift, click on the red object down there to deselect it. And then just press delete on the keyboard to delete everything else in there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over everything and bring the opacity all the way up. And click off of it. I'm going to click on just the word Inkscape. And I'm going to make that white. I'm going to click on the blue object. And I'm going to make that like a, uh, like a dark blue. Something like that maybe. Let me go to the Fill tab and just alter this a bit. I'm using the HSL tab here. Maybe I'll go with something like that. The number I'm using, 353C49FF, if you want to use that as well. And for this red one, you can make that whatever color you want. I'm just going to make this uh, like I did in the thumbnail. I'll make this yellow. Like that. And uh, the final step would be to put... Uh, kind of like a uh, the illusion of like a, a, re a reflection, like a light reflection on the text. So to do that, I'll click on the text right there and I'll hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. And I'll make that a shade of like light gray, maybe 10%, maybe even uh, 30% or 20. Yeah, 20 works good. And now I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool. I'm going to create an ellipse going over that. Let's get rid of that outline by holding Shift and clicking the X. And I'll just make this red. And I'll bring down the opacity a bit. Oops, wrong one. Bring down the opacity. Go back to the Select tool. Hold Shift. Click on the text. And make sure we have it centered on the vertical axis. And click off it to deselect everything. And I'll take just this circle right here. I'm just going to hold Control and make this a little bigger. Position it maybe somewhat like that. Going like a little more than halfway through the text. And then we can hold Shift. Click on the text. And go to Path. Intersection. And now we can turn that into a linear gradient with that button there. And we can go to the gradient tool, which is right here. And take this node and bring this up here. And take this node and bring this straight down. You can hold control to lock it onto the vertical axis. Maybe something like that. We can go back to the select tool and click off of it to deselect everything. And that should pretty much do it for this tutorial. We have created our arched text emblem using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.